ओम मंगलम गुरुदेवाय देव्य मतृक्ष मंगल मंगल भक्ता वृंदेव्यो सर्वोकाय मंगल ओम स्थापकाय धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठय राम कृष्णय मंगल ओं जननी शरद देवी राम कृष्ण जगद्गु पर पद्मे तो श्री ता प्रणमा मुहुर्मुहु ओं सराशु सरंभम शंकरचार मजम स्मर चार प्रायत वंदे गुरु परम परम ओं गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरुदेव महेश्वर गुरुरेव परम ब्राह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओं भद्र काली नमो नित्यम सरस्वती नमो नम वीर विरंग वीरता विजस्थान श्री गणेश शारद गुरुभ्यो नम ओ जय मा जय मा happy to continue our discussion in class on the uh, devi gita from the shrima devi bhagavatam and after a very long time we're finally getting to a very nice part one second one second one second okay um uh we're i think on verse 42 or 44 something like that 40 in something like that and so all these verses this is our 21st class went for a 21st discussion and we've been averaging two maybe two or three verses a week um uh, so much we've covered a lot of material right even though not much has happened but everything has happened and you can see there's so much richness in every verse and so much meaning and so much background that we have been able to discuss about shaktism in general about the nature of the divine mother about the, uh, the theological development of the shakta tradition and now we're getting to some really um, esoteric juicy stuff right the, the gods performed thousands of years of tapasya reciting so many mantras doing nyasas and pujas and anu, jap mantra anusthanas um reciting uh, slokas and uh, uh, stotrams uh, reciting sahasranamas parayana Uh, we discussed all these wonderful sadhanas um um performing uh, difficult austerities for thousands of years and then the divine mother appeared first as an infinite light described as the light uh, from the uh, of uh, uh, as identifying her with brahman the nirguna aspect and then that light took on the form of a woman as the supreme goddess of venetian we spent the last many five or six meetings going through the description of her the beautiful description of bhuvaneshri devi and 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 then the gods became overwhelmed by this vision by both of these visions you can imagine maybe you can't imagine we you should try to imagine an infinite light blazing like 10000 suns cooling like 10000 moons like this right and then taking on this gorgeous form of bhuvaneshri but also think of it in connection to their sadhana their de- they up to this point they became very desperate a great demon had taken over right uh, tarakasura had taken over in great desperation they go to vishnu he gives them instruction to go that right now the divine mother is ever present she lives in manidweep she's in every in every in every moment available to you she's a great wish fulfilling tree go to her so in great desperation they go to her and perform thousands of years of sadhana and then they get the result right the initial result they get the encounter with her they get her audience and they're and, and uh, so you can imagine this is the peak of of so much effort so much meditation so much sadhana so many prayers so much longing so much desperation right and they finally get to see her get overwhelmed and of course it doesn't you know maybe for some of us if we had such a vision of the divine mother okay bas ho gaya everything is fine that's that's our our life is now successful but their struggle is still beginning right because she they she will they will ask the reason for their the manifestation their their sadhana and to see her is to ask a boon right so they they will ask a boon right but that boon in retrospect seems will seem silly right you know it's like she even at one point she even asked what's your boon he says no no we seen you that's enough no 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 it's not enough you did sadhana for this particular purpose right what is that purpose let's let's uh, and then they they oh there's the a demon please be born as parvati the son of and so she agreed to be born as parvati the son of daughter of the himalaya who's the main speaker the main representative in the devi gita speaking for the gods 
so it's uh, it's peak. It's this is the first crescendo or the second crescendo. First crescendo was seeing her as infinite light. Next crescendo of of experience is is seeing her in this beautiful form. And now they're they're overwhelmed and with their eyes closed, their eyes filled. Remember these beautiful verses filled with 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 liquid flowing love and his tears of how beautiful of blowing love choked not being able to speak but then they pull themselves together it was bent neck bent with devotion they begin to sing praises to the world mother and that world mother right in the devi gita in the devi bhagavatam is devi bhuvaneshwari and so today by divine arrangement is bhuvaneshwari jayanti this is a day when she, I don't think this is the appearance for the Devi Gita, because that's uh, the month of Chaitra mentions when she appeared. So it is not uh, this, another, it's not, we're at the wrong time for that. But there is an appearance where the Devi Bhuvaneshwari first appeared, and this is a day we celebrate. We say, It's like we have like the birth anniversaries or the advent anniversaries of, of saints and of, of avatars. The goddesses themselves usually have a, um, of course, they're birthless and deathless, but there's a moment when they first appear, and that appearance is marked. And so today is the one of the the days we celebrate, especially Bhuvaneshwari Devi. Um, maybe at the end, I'll, uh, I'll, we can we can meditate a little bit on some of her uh, uh, beautiful appearances. Um, so wherever, let's let's look at our verses. Let's go to our verses here. Share a screen. You can see that I imagine. Okay. My screen's a little messy right now. Can you just see the verses? Okay. Because yes, I have yes. too many things open, so I don't know what's what's showing, what's not showing. So we remember the, the, we'll back up a few verses after seeing her the embodiment or in verse uh, forty two, seeing her the embodiment of compassion, the entire host of God bowed low, unable to speak, choke choking on tears and silence, right, right, uh, um, struggling to regain their composure, their necks bending with devotion, their eyes brimming with tears of living joy, they glorified the. Uh, um, uh, Jagarambikam, the the world mother. So and it says that Stuti, Stuti, they they glorified her with hymns, right? They sang hymns to her. So now we'll look at some of the verses that the hymns they sang. It's generally understood that the hymns are, are in kind of three sections, and so this is uh, the first section of the hymns. Uh, of the verses are collected from various sources. And we can interpret the fact they're collected from various sources in different ways. We can interpret it from a little bit academic way is that when the text, this, this important text became uh, um, written down and uh, composed, if you would like this, um, um, it, it pulled from many sources. It pulled from the Chandi, it pulled from the Gita, it pulls from the uh, uh, Vedas, from the Devi Upanishads. And like it pulls from different texts and things like that and creates like this. So that's one way to think of it. But we talked a little bit last week is that these are verses that the gods in the story, from this within the story, the gods knew these verses. These are the same verses that they would have been reciting to her during their sadhana, trying to get her vision. Now they have her vision, get overwhelmed. They go back now to, to the same verses or similar verses that they have known, that they knew that they had practiced, right? Um that but now they they look at these verses with much deeper understanding right because now they they i sometimes think i listen like listening to bhajan we have a thousand bhajan um, um files on our computer things like that and i like so many nice bhajans and kirtan we listen all the time but once in a while we just like i need to hear a saint chant Right, so you put on a Nanamoy Ma's bhajan, the Swami Chidananda's bhajan, and things like this. You know, the the great the great saints and they chant, because they know for whom to whom they are, they have personal experience of whom for whom they chant, right? The, you know, so that uh, so they're 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 I think the mantras and their their singing has potency, you know, a different type of potency. So now these same hymns and verses from the Vedas and other and from the Puranas and the Vedas and collected. 
have are pregnant with a new level of knowledge because now they have some realization, right? They have some experience. They've seen her, right? They've had experience of her. They've seen her both in, in as the infinite light and then as well as Goddess Bhubaneshwari appearing for their as the uh, Kripa Murti. Remember the the image of the the embodiment or the image of compassion, right? Unfeigned compassion. These beautiful verses from last week, last couple of weeks. So what do they say? They will start with this is verse forty four. So oh, I think there are three sets of the this hymn or collection of verses is in three sections. The first section we consider the Vaidika section, right? These are mantras from the Vedas, right? So specifically, the other the last section also has a lot of Vedic themes, the Vedic mantras, but these are direct quotes from a very important Vedic hymn, which we'll discuss as we go into it. Namo Devi Mahadevi Shivaye Satam Nama Satam Namaha Nama Pakrit Pakritye Badraye Niyataha Pranataha Smatam Pranataha Smatam. It is mentioned in well, we'll, we'll go, let's, let's look at the, let's look at this verse here. First, I need a little bit of caffeine. Hold on. Let's look at these. Um, namo. So there's a word that's repeated many times. Namo. Namo Devi Mahadevi Sitaram Namaha. I bow to Devi, the god, oh goddess or the goddess. I bow to the goddess. Right? He's translated, Mackenzie Brown uses hail. It's okay. Actually, I think uh, better to really emphasize this namo, right? The, uh, it's like a um, it's a very humble statement. Namo, I bow. Uh, we reverence, we we supplicate, we humility, we bow to the goddess. N n the goddess, and there's another name, Mahadevi, the goddess and the great goddess, right? And Shivaye, another name for the goddess, Shivaye, Shiva. Right? Shiva sometimes refers to, it's Shiva and Shiva, the long A makes it feminine. Right, so Shiva is a name for the Devi as the consort of Shiva, but this is not what it means. Neither it, it's this verse is found in two texts in the Devi Gita of the Upanishads, in the Devi Upan Devi Upanishad, the Tarva Veda, and in the Chandi. Right, neither one of them are claiming or or glorifying her as the spouse of Shiva. Right, so she is herself Shiva, Shiva, right? and so Shiva has the name Shiva has certain meaning means goodness and beneficence and purity. It's a, it's a very auspicious name, right? Uh, so I bow to Devi and the Mahadevi, right? Or I bow to Devi who is, maybe these are five names, these, not maybe, these are five names of one goddess. We bow to the goddess, we bow to the great goddess, we, got, we bow to Shiva or Shiva, right? Namaha. Nama Pakriti, we bow to Pakriti, Prakriti. Right, prakriti means nature, simple meaning. We, we bow to hail nature, we bow to nature. Badraye, right, another name. Um, we bow to Badra. Badra is, is what does it mean? He's translated as pro propitious, means good, propitious, beneficent, has many meanings, but this is the main meaning, right? And then niyataha, pranataha, smatam. I bow uh, with... Um, a great, it says, it says, we humbly, we humble ourselves attentively before. I bow uh, carefully with respect to her again and again. So the word namaha is again and again, right? I mean, it's, it's repeated again and again. I bow, I bow, I bow, I bow, and I bow, right? Pranataha means I'm also, pranam, we get the word pranam means also I bow. Uh, so with attention, I, I bow to goddess, I bow to the great goddess, I bow to Shiva, I bow to Pakriti, I bow to Badra, very carefully with great respect. I'm, 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 I bow, again and again. Right. This is very. My iPad is on is glitchy today, so I have to I have my hard copy today in my notes. Um, so this Nama, Namo, and Namaha. Namo and pranaha, uh, pranam. It means I bow. You know, it's like Om Namo Shivaya, I bow to Shiva. That's a simple meaning, or we worship Shiva, another meaning, right? But it comes, 
in the tantric tradition, they like to pull words around, pull words apart into their essential meaning, trying to find out a deeper uh, central meaning, right? Of how we get the common meaning. The common meaning is I bow or respect or worship, but it comes from from uh, uh, na mama. Right? Na mama means na means not, mama means mine, right? So it is not mine or nothing is mine or not me. Swami Lakshmanju defined it as not me. That's how he, do, he did Namaha, right? So when you say Om Namah Shivaya, right? Nama means I bow to Shiva. But when you're saying Shi, Namah Shivaya, you're saying not me, Shiva. Not me. When you say Namo Devye, we say not me, Devi. Not me, Mahadevi. Not me, Shiva. Not me, Pakriti. Right, so you can you can apply that, and you think so. It's a very profound. Um, uh, of course, it's a great act of humility by not me, you, but that's the great meaning. The the less ego comes, the more Devi. Less ego, the more Shiva. Right. So this is a classic pranam. This is a pranam mantra. We discuss the different types of mantra. Pranam mantras. We mantras that you use to bow to deity. This one has no, bow, bow. I bow, I bow, I bow, I bow, I bow. Very carefully again and again, I bow. Right, so that's the core meaning. And that is an appropriate first response to what has just happened to them. Overwhelmed by the vision of the goddess, choking in emotion, tears filled with tears, with eyes filled with tears, um, um, unable to speak, right? Pulling themselves together with great discipline, with great control. What do they do? Not knowing what to say, they, re, they, they say a pranam mantra. We bow to you. That's a proper response. Bowing is always a very... Um, 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 safe response to divinity, right? Sri Ramakrishna said that that uh, that grace is like water flows down; it won't stay on a, on a mound, right? So grace also and kripa always flows down, right? It's uh, like uh, uh, and if you're uh, proud and egotistic, the, that it may be falling on you, even falling on your head, it falls off your head, right, and goes away, right? You have to keep yourself humble, then you catch all of that grace. Right, that's always flowing. And remember, her name is in the previous verse is Kripa Murti, Kripa Murti, right? Uh, that she is the embodiment of grace, flowing with grace, and incarnated grace. So the response is humility. So this verse, Namo Deve Mahadeve Shiva Satam Namaha. This is very famous. Maybe you recognize it. You know, I we we sometimes recite it. It's part of a of the Chandi of the Devi Mahatmyam, right? Right in chapter five, right chapter five is the beginning of the third chadita, the third story, um, um, where the god, remember the gods, they what happened actually in that story. If, if you remember, at the end of the second story of the in the Devi Mahatmyam, when um, uh, um, Mahishasura had been uh, destroyed, right, the Devi offers the gods a boon, and they said, no, no need for a boon. We've seen you, and we we see you, and the demons already killed. So no need for, no, 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 I offer you a boon. And they get a beautiful boon that I think is forever and we can benefit from this boon. They say, whenever we're in suffering caused by confusion and ignorance like this, if, if anyone remembers you, worships you with these hymns, right, you, you should immediately come and destroy their suffering, right? And so that's the boon that we still have when suffering if one remembers her with these beautiful mantras, these beautiful hymns, in other words, if one remembers her, she comes and destroys her suffering. The opening verses of this text of the Devi of the Devi Gita, um, if you remember the opening uh, of this text says, uh, 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 Lord Vishnu says, you are suffering because you've forgotten, you've forgotten her, you've forgotten your mother, right? So remembering her is the end of our suffering. So. In the Chandi, the, the gods, again, another set of demons comes up, right? The third set of demons is Shumba and Nishumba and his cohorts, right? And cause a lot of trouble. And the gods, again, this time they go into the Himalayas, into seclusion. Just like here, the gods went to the Himalayas, top of the Himalayas to do tapasya, to get Devi. There, and then they began to remember, chant these beautiful verses. And they and the first one they chant, right? This is starts in verse... Um, uh, it must be verse six or something. Maybe I've written down. Verse nine, sorry. 
Here, the few, the first, the first few verses just describe how the demons have come up, and then the, how the gods go into the Himalayas into its seclusion, and then they begin to recite. And the first thing they recite, Namo Devi Mahadevi Shiva Satam Namaha. This is what the, this was the first thing. And the response of this, there's a few other preamble verses, and then it's a very famous. We call it the the Tantraktam uh, Devi Shuktam Devi Devi Shuktam. That uh, namastasye, 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 namo namaha. Many of you know these these verses. Ya Devi Sarvabhute Shu Matri Rupena Samsata. That goddess that exists in all beings in the form of mother, in the form of hunger, in the form of peace, the form of of compassion, the form of intelligence, the form of sleep, the form of thirst, all the form of peace. We bow to you. We bow to you. We bow to you again and again. The response of this, them remembering the world mother who exists where. In all beings, in all in all things, in all beings, in all states, right? Then she appears, and in a beautiful part of the story, she appears, and eventually, Shumba and Nishumba are are killed. So they start with this mantra, a very recognizable mantra from the Chandi, or the Dev Mahatmyam. It also appears, right, in the uh, Tarva Veda, right. It's known as a Devi Atarva Shirsha, right? Um, um, is also that is also called um, in popular kind of tradition. It's known as the Devi Upanishad, right? So if you look up Devi Upanishad, you may find there's Devi Upanishads. There's a category of Shakti Upanishads, but one of them called known as the Devi Upanishad is the same as this um, Atarva Atarva Var Shirsha. It is the Tarva Varshirsha, right? I think it's twenty things I gave you in the in the um, in the in the Google Classroom a translation of that. If you want to look at it and kind of meditate on these beautiful verses, and in it, yeah, thank you. Uh, um, um, there, in it, there's a lot of aham verses. Half the half the hymn is the the Divine Mother describing her own existence. I am this. I am that. Right. Uh, so it's in her first person. And then the second part is the gods in that story response. They also respond with this, this mantra, Namo Devi, Mahadev, Shiva, Mahadev, right? So in the, in the, here in the Devi Bhag, in the Devi Gita, it's pulling from, even though this mantra is a famous mantra of the, of the, of the Devi Shuktam, of the Tantric Devi Shuktam, of the Chandi, Devi Hatmiyam, it's there. It's definitely quoting from the Devi Upanishad. Uh, um, well, I've, I've, I've started to say. I don't think I said this hymn, uh, um, um, this Vedic hymn or a collection of Vedic hymns, in the Devi Gita, is very often recited before chanting the Chandi. It's one of the appendage hymns. There is when you when the Chandi the Mahatmyam is recited as as a recitation sadhana parayana, right? This hymn is usually also recited as a Vedic. Uh, uh, the Vedic hymn, right? Uh, so it's important. But the Devi, the, I was saying the Devi Gita starts with this, but it quotes, it, it uses five verses, all from the Devi Gita, the Devi Upanishad, right? From the Tarva Veda, right? So it's really this section, although this month is from the Chandi, is really quoting from the Vedic, from this uh, text, right? And that's important because, of course, the gods recite the Vedas, right? We know that, right? That's our belief and the tradition, right? But also it's an important, it serves an important purpose in the Devi Bhagavatam, Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. We mentioned Devi Bhagavatam. It's a particular development in the in the um, um, Shakta tradition, right? And so that in particular development Shakta tradition is that it's, it's a tantric text and a Shakta text but it's also claiming Vedic authority, Vedic credentials, right? The fact that there is Vedic mantra throughout the text, freely quoted, right? Freely used, right? Um, so it gives it gives the text, the Devi Gita specifically, and the Devi Bhagavatam in general, credentials, a Vedic credential Vedic connection, and it also connects the Devi with a Vedic with the Vedas. She's the Vedic goddess, the goddess that whom that that the the uh, uh, the Devi Gita speaks, we speak, the Devi the Devi um, Upanishad, 
uh, from the Tara Veda is quoting from, right? Uh, uh, her speaking and who is being praised, the goddess, the Vedic goddess is the one that's being praised, right? So it's, it both legitimizes and raises the this Puranic text to the level of Veda or shows that it's Vedic. And the goddess herself is the goddess in the Vedas. In our Hindu goddess course, we discuss actually the, there, the, there are goddesses in the Vedas, right? And um, of course, we went through the 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 um, um, Devi Shuktas and things like that, right? But the goddess is not central. We like to think of the goddess as central in the Vedas. The goddess is not central in the Vedas. There's a couple important hymns, and and the month and this collection of mantras pulls from those hymns, right? To show that the the tradition that the goddess is important in the Vedas, right? So Bhubaneshwari is that goddess. And throughout the text, she herself will glorify the importance of the Vedas and the Vedic understanding, and also be identified with not just the Vedas, but also with the Upanishads, right? A lot of quotes and a lot of language using the Upanishadic um, 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 uh, tradition that she is, that the, the Divine Mother, Bhuvaneshwari, is the Brahman of the Upanishads, right? So these are the beginning of that, is that when the gods are reciting Vedic hymns, she is the Vedic goddess. Who's that Vedic goddess? Let's ask her. She's going to say, I am the I am Brahman mentioned in the Upanishads, right? And this is the way you realize the, the non-dual Brahman mentioned in the Upanishad. I shall teach you. And that's a way of merging or understanding my nature. These are the next section, the next uh chapter especially we'll go into this um so this beautiful let's look at this first again share screen okay namo devi mahadevi so it's a pranam mantra it's a mantra from the chandi devi devi mahatmyam it's also a vedic mantra um, um from the atarva veda little detail that this mantra the devi gita the Devi, Devi Upanishad of the Atara Veda is a late Upanishad, probably 9th to 14th century. It was developed, right? But the verses, most of the verses actually come from the Rig Veda. So although the Devi Upanishad is fairly recent text as far as Upanishads go, and as far as Vedic uh, things that claim to be connect with Vedas go, the mantras are all ancient, right? That the, the Upanishad collection is not so ancient, but the mantras come from Rig Veda, which is much older. Just a little detail. So let's look at this. 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 Who are we bowing to? There's. There. If you notice, there's five names, right? Devi, Mahadevi, Shiva, Pakriti, and Badra. These are five names. And just so we're discussing, when you have three eyes and four legs or four arms, right? Or you know, these numbers have um, some meaning. Right, and so when you see a collection with five names, there may be some meaning, and that's one of the ways it's been interpreted. I'm going to give a little bit of a of a exegesis uh, of this, these these verses, and some may claim that it's an eisegesis of it. That I'm I'm looking, I'm reading into these verses, uh, but there's a tradition of understanding, especially the uh, this verse and verses from the Upanishads and verses from the Chandi, especially in a very esoteric way, an occult way, looking for hidden meanings, right? And I'm using a methodology, right, uh, presented by, by uh, uh, shock to commentators, right? There's one, especially now, I'm inspired a little bit, kind of got me revved up to meditate on this verse in this way and present this particular interpretation of these five names in this verse from a great living saint named Swami Ishwarananda Giri, um, he's, I think he, as far as I know, he's still living. He's a Tapasvi Vedanta Shakta uh, um, uh, saint living on Mount Abu uh, in Gujarat. We're discussing today with our guest of Mount uh, Glories of Mount Abu. So he's one of the local saints there, and his books and tapes and are a little bit difficult to get. And one, one of my uh, uh, dear bro Sadhu brothers, uh, Udasan, brother who lives on Narmada, he he turned us on to the books and writings and 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 um, presentation of this one uh, modern saint, right? So I'm using a little bit, but he his commentary is also based upon tradition. You know, he'll he, he's he's he himself is quoting other commentators, right? So, but that's how I guess get my own view, right? How, one way to present the, these verses. 
So five names, Devi, Mahadevi, Shiva, Pakriti, Badra. So we have to think what, there's five in the goddess tradition. There's lots of, five, you know, Shiva has five heads, right? You know, each head is present, you know, there are the four Vedas and the Upanishad. That's one, you know, you can, there's all ways you can interpret it this way, right? But let's look at, let's keep it close to kind of what, what the uh, this tradition says, right? So what is, okay, Devi, we bow to a particular goddess. Here, the goddess, this beautiful picture of, of Art Argya, from Art Argya's art, um, 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 uh, Abu Ganeshwari, we've uh, showed him, we showed this beautiful picture. This is this is a specific goddess, right? Being worshipped here is Bhuvaneshwari, right? So she's a goddess, right? And you can do this verse to any goddess. Oh, the goddess, right? So and she's Mahadevi. She's the great goddess. And we in our in our Hindu Hindu goddess course, we talked a lot about the development, and especially from the, the Devi Mahatmyam, and even more so from the Devi Bhagavatam, right? The development of the Mahadevi idea that there's different goddesses that are become was the development of the Mahadevi conception in Hindu theology. That there's a great goddess. The different goddesses uh, may are our aspects or faces or manifestations or servants of the great goddess. The 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 the, the great goddess. so in the Devi Bhagavatam Devi Gita, Bhuvaneshri is not just a goddess. She is the goddess, the great goddess, to whom all goddesses are her form, the rupas and manifestations and shaktis, manifestations. That's a simple, she's a goddess. And, and what does it mean? And then, um, so greater, so Devi means goddess, and Mahadevi means greater than the goddess. Greater does not just mean bigger and stronger in a very monotheistic type of way. Although the Mahadevi, Mahadeva idea is a jump into monotheistic realms of philosophy and theology, for sure, right? There's one great God, there's one God, there's one great God, even if there's many, right? But it, it's, it's great, not just in strength and in size, but in subtlety, right? She's more, she's greater in the fact that she's, Mahadevi is more subtle, right? The, if you have many things made of clay, clay is more subtle than the things that they're made out of. Right, you have many things shaped of water and ice. Right, water that makes all the various distinct things is more subtle, right, and therefore is a is is a material cause and things like this. Right, that's one meaning of Mahadevi. Right, she's greater and more subtle. She is the cosmic, the universal, the subtle source of the Devi or of any Devi of this Devi also. That's one we can think of Devi and Mahadevi. Why why describe why use the word Devi twice? So there must be some it could just be, oh, goddess, great goddess, right? You can say like that. But no, I think it has some meaning. It's goddess and more than goddess, right? Greater than goddess, subtler than the goddess, the essence, right? So one way of understanding is that she's goddess and great goddess, which is greater and subtler. Let's try to look at the words a little. Devi, we have Devi means goddess, but it comes just like Deva means God. Another word for Deva is Sura. You have Asura as a demon. Sura means a similar thing in shining. Deva means shining, right? So in in comparison to Devi and Deva and Maha Devi, this is sages and, and commentators have, have seen. Let's look a little bit in tatvik in the tatva level, principle level, not, not on the personal level yet, right? Div, so deva comes from the word the root div. Div means to shine. Right. In the Upanishads, right, Deva, right, and this is a quote from the Upanishad. Remember, this is a quote from the from the Devi Upanishad, right? Deva means very often means Atman, means the self, right? Uh, uh, the individual self or the self in general, right? So when in this in beautiful dual language of Sanskrit poetry, oh goddess, but also maybe meaning perhaps also meaning an aspect of the goddess that has become the Atman, right? And then what is the Mahadevi, right? What's the, what's the um, so this is, Deva has been interpreted as Atma Prakash, the shining light of the Atman, right? The, the shining quality. And so shining, because we, we use the language of light, and, but actually means awareness of consciousness. It shines as awareness of consciousness, right? So Mahadevi, the great goddess 
greater and subtler than the, than the Devi, it becomes, so in other words, what's another word for greater in Sanskrit? You have like Atman, like we have to say, oh, there's Atman and then Paramatman, or Atman and Mahatma, you know, the great Mahatma, great, great, great soul, right? Or Paramatma means greatest soul, right? So ma, if Devi is Atma Prakash, Maha Devi is Paramatma Prakash, right? The great soul, right? Paramatma Swarupini is what the commentators have called the Maha Devi. She is the one, she is the one that shines as the individual soul, Devi, Atma, and as Maha Devi, the, the supreme soul or, or the great soul. And the Paramatma is kind of the universalized aspect of, 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 the, of the divine. In the opening verses of the Devi, of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Vaishnava text, it describes, he says that, that um, um, God is known in three features, right? As um, 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 Brahman, as Paramatman, and as Bhagavan, right? So the other term Paramatman is that the all-pervading aspect, right? The Just like water is... You have ice cubes, different ice cubes. The water is the essence of them all. It pervades all ice cubes. Water pervades, right? So, Paramatma pervades all Atmas. All Atmas are individuals, but the universal aspect of all Atmas, that is Paramatma in this ontology, right? So, Paramatma Prakash, right? The Supreme Self or the Universal Souls, the light of consciousness, right? like this, right? And then Shiva or Shiva. Right. That was so here has been interpreted as this is what that's both um that which is both Atma and Paramatma. Right. What is both Atman? What light is both the light of individual consciousness and awareness and of the universal or all pervading or multiple uh, consciousness and awareness, right? So in the Upanishadic language, this is a verse in the Upanishads, Deva means Atma, Ma Mahadeva, Mahadevi means Paramatma, and so Shiva here has been interpreted to mean Brahman, that which is both Atman and Paramatman, the supreme absolute, right, beyond even the conception of Paramatma. The localized version is Paramatma, uh, you know, universal version is Paramatma, and then localized version is Atman, like this. So this is what is both Atma and Paramatma Surupini? What is the light of both Atma and Paramatma? Brahman, right? So this is Brahma Surupini, is Shiva, right? That which is both the individual soul and the cosmic soul, that's another way of saying it, right? In which individual awareness and the cosmic awareness rest, that is Brahman, right? And this, a big theme, and I, it is, we're jumping, although you're re, we're reading into these ridiculous ideas into a verse that simply means we bow to the goddess who's also, who's good. Shiva means good or uh, benevolent like that, right? But the next section on the Devi Gita itself will describe I'm Atman, I'm Paramatman, I'm Brahman, right? So it's it's we, we're being primed for this realization. And maybe the gods, by choosing these verses and these verses, are this is already their dawning realization. This is their, they're realizing who they've been praying to, who, who they've seen, who they've invoked, who's going to teach them, right? That would, she who is uh, Atman, Paramatman, and Brahman. The Bra so here, Shiva, would we, we'd call that Shiva or Shiva as, usually we don't say Brahma Surupini, we would, uh, um, um, uh, uh, or, or uh, um, um, Akasha or Prakash like that, we'd say Brahma Chaitanya. This is the technical term. The light of consciousness of Brahman, Brahma Chaitanya, right? So these three names, the first three names, Devi, Mahadevi, and Shiva, right, capture the three forms of Chaitanya, of consciousness, of awareness, right? Of Atman, right? Paramatman, and Brahman. So what is Paramatman? We have to think of Paramatman a little bit. That is a code in these verses for Ishwara. Right, so you have so the who's the the in the, the Lord of my own personal Lord is me, right? I'm the Lord of my world of my realm. The Lord of all is Ishwara of the mana of the manifested world is Ishwara, 
and the Lord as the supreme reality, no longer considered as Lord beyond that idea, is Brahman. So, um, um, so Atman Ishwara or Paramatma and and um, um, uh, Brahman. So then we have two more names, right? Pakriti and Badra, right? So in the last verses, also in describing her um, uh, iconography of Bhuvaneshwari, she holds the gada, not the gada, the um, ankush, the the hook, right, and the pashu, pasha, right, the 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 um, lasso. And we describe we we've been quite a bit discussing the the that which binds us and that which liberates us. There's many um, we discuss many flavors of that, but that's a one easy understanding. And we discuss that that in the chandi uh, she's described as vijjamaya and avijjamaya, right? So that's an, one way we understand um, pakriti and 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 badra will refer will be referring to avijjamaya and vijjamaya, right? Or another term is uh, Vijamaya Shakti, right? And Avijamaya Shakti. Avijamaya Shakti and Vijamaya. So Pakriti. Right or prakriti that in tantra we use prakriti and prakriti shakti. What's the energy of nature? Prakriti means nature, foundational nature, right? What is the energy of that? Right. So it has a quality mentioned in the tantras of avarana, means covering. It has a quality of covering. So prakriti itself is the supreme shakti covering itself hiding itself. We talked about the kleshas and things that we've, in the last few verses, the last few weeks, we've discussed some of these, these ideas. Covers itself in order to become name, form, and everything, and, every, and everything. Uh, everyone and everything, right? Let's see here. So in the realm of prakriti, in the realm of nature, right, everything is pashu. Right, that's why it's in, shown in her iconography with that noose. Everything is bound, right? And also, when we enter the realm of nature, maybe a supreme Shiva, supreme consciousness entering nature, we become bound. We become a pashu, which means a beast, a bound beast, right? We gain our sense of individuality and not only our sense of individuality, but we're literally bound. We're bound by ignorance. We're bound by this world of manifestation. One way of understanding it. This is. Of course, this is not not all philosophical systems and theological systems agree with this interpretation of of, of, of reality. But this is one way. This is how the tantras describe it, right? So, if pakriti is avijja shakti and um, um, and avarana shakti, covering, binding, make everything pashu. So badra, what is badra literally means good, beneficent. Um, 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 it also means joyful, has many meanings, but it means that which is which does good, right? So if the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Reality, which is both Atman, Atman, Ishwara, Brahman, creates this world of nature, seemingly binding us and binding, binding itself and binding us, when showing mercy showing goodness towards us, shows a different face, shows her face, a different face of compassion, right? Right, Kripa Murti, right, in the last week's verses, right, the, the response is to uncover. That becomes Vijjamaya Shakti, as Sri Ramakrishna's language, right? Badra Shakti or Vijjamaya Shakti, revealing, it reveals, what does it reveal? It reveals the effulgent nature of Deva, Mahadeva, Devi, or Deva, Mahadevi, Mahadeva, and Shiva, Shiva, right? The individual, the universal, and the a cosmic, right? The in, infinite, inconceivable, right? So that is Badra. So she shows herself as this world. She's become this world, right? And enters this world. This world is her, manifested. But it says in the text, I mean, we don't, we, I can quote many verses, 
to show, oh, it's true because the Vedas say so, or the Upanishads say so, or the Puranas say so, or the Tantras say so, or Sri Ramakrishna said so, or Vivekananda said so, or Yogananda said so. I can do, we can do like that. And that's also true. They're, they're qualified authoritative pramanas or evidences like that. But I think we have our own evidence, right? That we are in this world in a certain sense, we we believe the verses tell us, the scriptures tell us, our gurus tell us, but our very nature tells us that we we are the light. We are we are conscious and we're living light. We're we're pure awareness, right? We uh, the one mantra says uh, 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 like there's a beautiful mantra called uh, Makara. Uh, forgetting the verse right now, it says I am. Right, you know, it's like all of us shine. There's that I am, I'm always dear. These beautiful verses, and the uh, uh, Vedantic verses, that we're, whatever we're thinking, our own experience, we know we are. We know we're shining. We know we're beloved. Actually, at the core, right? It says we're never. There's a verse that says we're never not dear. We're never not beloved, right? But that's also we intuit that we feel it hopefully i pray that you intuit this and feel that i think that's why we're gathered here right but that's not our regular experience we we experience all the struggles of the world of duality and manifestation right we suffer we're bound birth death old age disease rebirth of an indeterminate nature this is what we have to look forward to you know the, the cycle of, of this uh, we desire, our desires aren't fulfilled, so we suffer, our desires are fulfilled, and we're scared we're going to lose them. We desire fulfilled with the whole temper, and we do lose them. You know, you know, all the different permutations of everything is, there's a lot of um, uh, bondage in this beautiful world to which we're supposed to be perhaps free, right? So to... It's said that there's the... the, the, um, the, the if one has the adhikari, one is spiritually qualified. Adhikari means qualification, right? When one is ready, we may use in popular language an old soul or something like this. So, you know, when something like when one is one has gained through many and the scriptures say many lives of austerity and sadhana and grace of saints and and good karma, like that. We use this language, right? Then then Ma shows us Badra, this face as Vijamaya. She shows us her hiding and we don't get lost in the hiding and in, in, in what and where she's hiding right until then she shows us pakriti she shows us nature nature is glory we know she's a god we know the earth is holy and the skies are holy you know the heaven and earth to the, the uh, proclaim the glory of god the, the 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 psalms say right we see it but that's wonderful but it's not liberating Right, we see a beautiful world or a horrible world. If we see a beautiful world, we also see a horrible world—the world of duality and 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 very very good in this, right? But we, but until we're we're sufficiently ready, we will not see the next the badra, the vidya maya shakti, uh, face of the devi, right? And so, the gods in the story, right? They performed thousands of years of difficult austerity. We listed them: chapa, meditation. Nyasa, Puja, the Umba, Yagna, the mother sacrifice, right? All these, uh, 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 Parayana, Kirtan, Bhajan, all these things they did, right? Uh, 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 in order to be ready for this next level, right? The next, to, to see a different face of the Devi, right? When we see, we're actually seeing both, but we only, we're, 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 we get caught in the Avijja, in the, in the Avijja Maya Shakti, ignorance. The quality of ignorance, right? So this is one way of understanding these five names, right? The light of consciousness, the Brahma, the Chaitanya as Atman, as Paramatman or Ishwara, and as Brahman. And then two other aspects of Vijamaya, Avijamaya, the uh, concealing, binding um, as Pakriti of nature, and Badra, the benign, merciful look that removes our ignorance and gives us knowledge, right? Knowledge of her. That's one way. Let's look at another way. Hmm. Go back here. Okay. Namo Devi Mahadev Shiva. There's another, these five names Devi, Mahadevi, Shiva, Pakriti, and Badra. 
so we are dealing with the Bhuvaneshwari with the Supreme Goddess, right? The Parameshwari, right? She's she's Parameshwara and she's Param Brahman, but she's also Parameshwari. This is the text glorifying the goddess, right? And it's using the classic language of Tantra and Shaktism, right? And it uses it throughout, right? So I'm just, we're reading into these verses what she herself is stated, what's stated in following verses. Right? We're using the text itself and the larger text of Devi Bhagavatam to interpret the use of this text, right? The, the way this text is, perhaps this verse could be understood, why it's so profound, right? So when we think of like, you know, uh, different names for the absolute, different name the divine, right? We say, oh, like, oh, the Lord, right? The Ishwari, Ishwara, Ishwari, Bhuvaneshwari is the, the Lord or the lady or the controller, the supreme uh, female controller of the universe, Bhuvaneshwari, right? One way to the giant. So Ish, but Ishwara, there's different names for the absolute. There's Brahman, there's Bhagavan, there's Ishwara. As a goddess, as the supreme goddess, as the supreme controller, what does it mean to be Ishwara? So Ishwara takes on in Tantra a very specific definition, right? In Kashmir Tantra and Turkish Shaivism, they, they use these, these, this definition quite a bit also, right? So there's, and in Sri Vidya Tantra also, Sri Vidya also has this understanding that there's five main qualities of Ishwara, five gunas or three, five powers, five shaktis, right? to use the language of Shaktism, Ishwara has five powers, right? This is one of the reasons why Ishwara is often seen as Lord Shiva, Parameshwara in, in, in most Tantra, is seen with five faces. One of the meaning of his five faces, he has five powers, right? We'll describe what, what those five powers are that make him Ishwara, make him God, right? If Ishwara is translated, Ishwara is not a good, God is not a good translation for Ishwara, but if you translate Ishwara as God, what makes somebody God, and using this definition, is having these five powers, right? Five abilities, the five powers, being the cause and the wielder of these five powers. But this is a Shakta text, right? So it's not Ishwara, it's Ishwari. So she has these five powers. So what are these five powers? Stristi, Stiti, Laya, Nigraha, and Anugraha. We'll go, we'll go through them in a second. So strishti means creation, right? So strishti means creation. Uh, uh, uh. So we think of the creator, right? It's a it's a Hindu idea, the Christian idea of uh, uh, of of the creator. God creates out of nothing. Right in the Hindu general understanding, nothing comes out of nothing. Everything comes out of something, or or the or something. Everything comes out of the one thing. The many, everything comes out of something. The many things come out of one thing, right? So the Devi God makes uh, uh, makes the world out of himself or herself, out of itself, right? So the, so this is creation, right? Then the Stiti, also known as pal Palana, means the sustenance or uh, continuation or protection. Palana means protection, right? And then laya, laya means to dissolve or vinashana, destroy. So creation, preservation, and destruction, right? Or, 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 or uh, so this is, stristi, stristi. we say in the Chandi, using the beautiful verses of the Devi, Devi, uh, Devi Mahatmyam, you are the Shakti, the power that creates, sustains, and destroys. Stristi, stiti, vinashanam. The power that creates, sustains, and vinashanam, destroys. That uses a very um, um, violent language for destruction. Vinasha, the destroyer. Of course, he's being praised. And uh, for destroying a particular demon, but she's the one who destroys the universe at the end of time, right? Mahapralaya, like this. In the, the, the verse for uh, uh, a Somya verse, this is an Ugra verse, a Somya verse, a gentle version of the goddess as Lalita Tipura Sundari says, Stristi Stiti Laishwarim. Shri Vijaya Jagadatrim Stristi Stiti Laishwarim. 
Namamilatam Nitya, Maha Tripura Sundari, oh, Tripura Sundari, Lavita Tripura Sundari, you are the one who creates, sustains, and dissolves. Right? It's a gentle name, right? Rather than the one who destroys or kills, right? Or annihilates the one who dissolves. So here we can also think Laya Shakti or, uh, or, or Vinasha Shakti, right? So these are three powers creation, sustenance, and destruction. We have three gods in the Hindu pantheon, and we think of the Hindu trinity, if we can use that language, we're using the word trinity very differently. The Trimurti is the term that's usually used in popular Hinduism, right? And that is the one uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Brahma, we think, is the creator, kind of a demiurge, to use uh, um, Western, science, uh, Western esoteric um, concepts. Vishnu, and Vishnu is the one who preserves. Right, and uh, um, he's Satvaguna. He's also the one who generally incarnates. Why? Pal uh, Palana to protect. Right, he's the one in order to protect what he preserve. The way you preserve is to protect. Right, you know, if, if part of preservation is protection. So he is born in every age in Brahma Gita when Dharma declines, Adama arises. Right, I'm born every age to protect the, the good and destroy the wicked. Right, right. Uh, and then you either think of Shiva or Rudra as a destroyer, right? End of time, he's a great Mahapralaya a transformer. We may use gentle terms or dissolver to use the term Laya here, right? So Brahma. So by saying Stristi Stiti Vinashanam in that Chandi verse says you are the power that creates, sustains, and destroys. What's that saying? Let's turn it back. What it's saying into popular Hinduism, you are the power that Brahma uses to create, you are the power that Vishnu uses to preserve, and you are the power that that of Shiva's to destroy or to transform, right? Right. And so you are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, or at least the Shakti of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Without you, the, the three three murtis can do nothing, right? Or we can go further, you are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. You can just say it like that way, right? When we think of creation, sustenance, and destruction, we think of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. She's Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, actually, or at least they're Shakti, right? Then it says, Sristi um, Tivinasham, uh, Shakti Bhute Sanatani, and you are the eternal, Sanatani, right? What's eternal? Not just long lasting, means one beyond time, the one that's beyond, un that's one that's unchanging, the substratum, the, uh, uh, the one that it, that is not created, is not dis preserved and not destroyed, right? The un the one that's beyond, below, transcendent, encompassing, foundation of the changing is the changeless, right? In 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 Vedanta we call that Brahman. You are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, and you are the supreme non-dual Brahman. That's what that beautiful verse, Shakti Bhuta Sana. And then uh, you are you become the gunas, and it goes into the beautiful verse, right? But that's that that's the way of understanding sristi stiti and vinasha or sristi stiti laya. But I said that God has five powers. Also, there's a quality of the Indian mind that loves to play with language. The tantra does it all all the time, and so you hear me, oh. God means G generator. What is it? O. Uh, what is it? Uh, operator and D destroyer. Right. It's kind of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. People they like this type. It's kind of this idea, right? God has it's a job description. One who can create, sustain, and destroy. That's God. But God has two more powers. God has unlimited powers, of course. He's Ananta Shakti, right? But two more powers that are specified. One is called Nigraha, mentioned in the pre in the previous con conception. And that is, nigraha means to restrain, to tie. Remember, she, that, so, uh, it's like the noose ties or binds us, right? Right. It means to suppress. It means to imprison. It means to punish, right? And then anugraha. Anugraha means showering grace, right? Showing favor. Right, so let's look at our five names again. Let's see how they connect. Devi, Mahadevi, Shiva, Shiva, Pakriti, and Padra. Sristi, Stiti, Laya, Nigraha Shakti, Anugraha, Anugraha Shakti. So Devi, the one who creates. 
Mahadevi, the one who sustains. Shiva, just like Shiva is the name for the uh, Lord Shiva controls and, and, and destroys, right? So Shiva or Shiva is Laya or destruction or the, the solution. Creation, Devi, sustenance, Mahadevi, and Shiva, destruction or the solution. And then Pakriti, Pakriti once again is nature, right? And we mentioned is Avidya Shakti in the last conception. Here it's uh, um, nigraha, binding, um, 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 restraint, right? Uh, that, that, that's her quality, right? And Badra, when she is merciful and shows her grace, right? This smiling, this is a smiling face <laughs> here in, in this picture, right? She becomes Badra, showing. So that is the revealing. She re she she removes our ignorance. She removes her covering, right? She uncovers grace. That's a beautiful. The word for grace, anugraha is to uncover, right? Or to unbind. How beautiful. That's a beautiful, because we have to think, we, in a, in a few weeks ago, we kind of meditate a little bit, the difference between getting a blessing and getting grace, right? A boon, right? You say, oh, Ma, give me a boon. Please give me, have, have a good job, or let me, let my um, uh, children be happy, or uh, do good in school, or Whatever it is, uh, I mean, legitimate, who are we going to go to? We can go to our mother and ask for boons, right? But that's not the same thing as uncovering our innate divinity, right? It's giving a boon within the realm of duality, right? So boons are not the same as 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 kripa, right? Uh, uh, so her she so these are the so these are the five powers of Ishwari: the power creation, preservation, protection destruction, dissolution, covering, and uncovering, binding, and liberating, right? So that's a pretty, that is Ishwara, and here that is Ishwari, and I don't, I should have, I didn't have time uh, to include some other pictures, but maybe you've seen pictures of the of the Devi as um, um, pictures of Lalita Tiprasun, this is very common in the iconography of Lalita, in the Lita Sasanama, I've mentioned she's Pancha Brahma Sarupini, or she, she, Pancha, she sits on five Brahmas, or Pancha Preta, she sits on five corpses, right? And sometimes some very beautiful art I've collected, I have a folder of about 100 of these beautiful pic pictures that you see her throne, the four legs of her throne are our different deities, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, and then Isha, this is a unique, or Ishwara, in this cosmology, it's a little different uh, list, right? And then the then the plank that she sits on, uh, that on that the four legs is Sadashiva, right? These four are Brahma is Stristi Shakti, creative power. Vishnu is um, uh, 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 Stristi Stiti Shakti, preservation or pala Shakti. The uh, Vishiva we mentioned is Laya or or uh, destruction. And then you have Shiva, uh, um, um, Ish, Isha, uh, Ishwara or Ishwara is restraining, right? And Sada Shiva, the plank on which Ma sits, is Anugraha, grace, right? By sitting on these four, showing that these are the throne, right? Her power, we think of Ma's majesty as Ishwara or Ishwari, Bhuvaneshwari, Padameshwari, right? And this is the exaltation of the goddess, theological exaltation of Shakti in the Devi Bhagavatam, right? She sits on the throne. What's the throne? The throne of the five powers of Ishwara. She's Ishwara because she's the one that creates, sustains, destroys, covers, and reveals, right? You know, if that's what you mean by God, she's God. If you think, if you believe in one God, that's the God, that's what God has to do, right? And she, this iconography, these names are showing that she's that, right? <clears throat> so, also, her throne, her sovereignty is these five qualities, these five abilities, these five powers, right? But when she sits on top of something, right? There's another thing is there's a there's another language of iconography when somebody sits on something else, the thing they sit on is lower than than they are, right? So right, or when somebody stands on somebody. Like you see Kali standing on Shiva or, or dancing Shiva, standing on, standing on a demon, 
or Ganesh is standing on a, on a, on a mouse that used to be a demon. There, there's all kinds of story like when something stands on something, it pushes that thing down and shows its supremacy, its ruler, its it's uh, something rides it even more, right? You sit on something, stand on something, ride something. It's it's showing that you're the power, you're the winner, you're in control, right? These things are lower than you. So that's also an iconographical, uh, um, um, theological point that the goddess here is the supreme deity over Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, right? Isha and Sada Shiva even, right? In, in in that topography. So there are some paintings of Kali in this. I, I maybe I'll post them on the on the in the on the Google page, right? Some pictures of Kali also standing or sitting on the throne of these five. It's not as common uh, that 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 iconography. You think you're standing on Shiva or something like that, but there's there are some paintings uh, um, uh, 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 like this. And also there's a in the Dhyan Sloka of the Kali Kastakam. I mean Ambikananda's favorite hymn. We love this hymn very much. It describes the opening verses, describes verse three, I believe, describes that she ascends her court, her, because this is the Kali Kastakam attributed to Shankara is uh, definitely a Kali hymn, right? It's not describing Bhuvaneshwari or Lalita Tipura Sundari. These, it's a very, it's it's about the cremation ground and her iconography, right? So it describes she eagerly ascends her throne of corpses. And in some paintings, they're just a bunch of corpses. And then, because she's a cremation ground after all, she comes and sits on top of them. She's Pancha Preta, right? She sits on five corpses, not just a throne of five gods, right? Of five corpses. So that's kind of the idea also. She sits on that, that without her, they're like corpses. She's the energy of Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Isha, and Sada Shiva. Without her, they're just like corpses. She, oh, and in the you? iconography, yes. Uh, no, I was trying to. Um, yeah. get, I was just thinking because the in that verse in the Kali Kashtakam, mm -hmm. the that's the I last. Just me like this verse. <laughs> he knows this verse. Yeah, that's the last verse of the Janam. Yeah. And then when the very next verse is the Stuti. Uh, oh yes. Yeah, the so. first two lines of the Stuti, it's um, Viranchadi Devas Trayaste Gunamstri Samada Samaradya Kalim Pradana Babuvuhu. So it's it's having because Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva have taken shelter yeah. of Kali mm -hmm. they and it says because they are the devas of the gunas like you just said uh, uh, so Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva are able to do the creation work. sustenance and destruction yeah. by because they've taken shelter of her mm -hmm. and so in the Devi Bhagavatam later in the Bhagavatam at the end of the Devi Bhagavatam there's a very I mean I quote it all the time I go back to it all the time and I think I'll end with maybe some meditation on this, uh, um, um, a very profound vision showing the supremacy of the Devi where Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva are debating, I've talked about this before, are debating who's supreme, right? Who's okay, so The followers like to say, oh, my God, supreme Vishnu is higher than Shiva and Shiva is higher than Vishnu. But in this story, even Shiva and Vishnu are arguing which one's higher, which one's supreme, right? And just then a, 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 a chariot comes down, lands in front of them, and they're like, get in. So the Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva get into the chariot, and the chariot begins to rise up, right? And they see, as this universe comes smaller and smaller and smaller, gets left behind, they pass all these other universes. Each universe, they see Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva arguing about who's supreme. Like, hmm, this is weird, right? This is getting weird, right? And then they go and they and they 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 go into Mani Dweep, the jeweled island supreme goddess of the god of Bhuvaneshwari, and they see her, right? And they look down and they're no longer Brahma Vishnu and Shiva, they're little girl, little a little uh, a little Brahma Brahmi uh, Vaishnavi and, and Shiva, Raudri, right? As little girls dressed like, like they're normally, but but little wearing it, you know, Shiva's wearing a tiger skin sari. <laughs> you know, and and tiger and 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 Rudraksha earrings, the thing is like he's a little girl. And they're like, okay, this is interesting, right? And then they see, they realize that she is a supreme, she's their power, right? And seeing her, they simply want to worship her and be absorbed in her. He says, No, 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 no. I created you for a reason. I need worlds created, sustained, and destroyed in every world, right? You have a world to run, right? As my Shaktis, right? And you should know that you're only doing this by my power. 
So this is our big realization. And in the Chandi, very similar, the gods realize it, the Shakti and the Devi is their Shakti, and that itself is the death of the demons, right? The, the ego dies, right? But there's a great effect when one realizes that, I mean, the gods realize that she's their power. That's another way. What, what would that look like if we were to realize that? We'd realize that perhaps that she's Brahma Chaitanya, that she's Paramatma Chaitanya, and even Atma Chaitanya. She's our consciousness. She's our energy. She's our energy. She's God's energy. She's the universal supreme Brahman, Shakti, consciousness. She's nature, Pakriti, and Bhadra, and the one who liberates us from nature. Right? You think about that realization. It's like complete realization. Right, so the Devi is supreme. She has these five powers. Right, um, um, uh, this is the 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 the, the continuous theme. So in this, let's like like we we're out of time. That's all right. We're always out of time. Namabhadre niyata pranataha smatam. So prana we bow. How niyata. I lost my pranataha means we bow, we salute respectfully, right? It has a very respectful connotation. And niyata. Ni, ni, niyata means with he's translated with um attentively, that's how uh, uh Professor Brown, Mackenzie Brown has translated it, right? Niyata also means with care with attention, with care, with regulation, right? Um, um, there's a term, it means with devo with devotion, but with the, it's more than devotion. I'll, there's a line, niyataha, niyat, niyatmitaha, chitta, samhita, samyataha, thoroughly devoted and self-controlled, right? That's like a gloss of this term, right? Niyata means with great devotion, thoroughly devoted, and with self-control. They're doing it regulated, traditionally, following. Remember, they're overwhelmed by emotion. In the previous scene, the previous verse, they're overwhelmed, crying, hair standing on end, choking, not being able to speak. They pull themselves together, and then what do they do? They do what they're supposed to do, right? They recite mantras from the scriptures, right, with care and attention. Right, they don't just go overboard. They don't just melt. They don't just, you know, uh, 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 or scream like that. They, they, with, with, they, they bow as per the instructions of the tradition, uh, instructions of the scriptures, instructions of the guru, as per tradition. They, 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 like we are, like, like, uh, um, uh, 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 like if we're doing puja and you get a little overwhelmed by emotion, what are you supposed to do? ring the bell, offer the incense, offer, do chant the next mantra. You know, it's like the, 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 the tradition itself guides all of our emotion, all of our ecstatic symptoms, confused symptoms, everything. It, it gets, it's, it's done with, with um, um, uh, tradition, right? With control. Niyata, we have like niyama has a similar root, right? With, you know, the yam and niyama, right? So that ni, niyata, uh, uh, Niyataha has a similar type of meaning with 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 um, with discipline, right? We and so we sometimes recite this this important verse, right? As part of a in the Shakta tradition, there's a Shakta Archaman, right? The Vaishnava Archaman, Namo Vishnu, or Om Gubindaya Namaha, Om Kishavaya Namaha, and then Om Tad Vishnu Paramam Param Sarapashantisuru, Om Opavitru Pavitrova Sarvavastam. These beautiful mantras we chant these too in the purely shakta um, um, form of achaman, they don't do, they om atma tatvaya swaha, uh, vidya tatvaya, like, like that. And then this is the mantra. Namo deve maha deve shiva sadam sutam namaha namapapete badrae. We, I'm, I'm worshiping you, whoever you are, that's these five names, Shiva, Devi, Mahadevi, Shiva, Pakriti, and Badra. Right, we've we've given two different ways of interpreting these five names, right, or three different ways to read five names, right. I'm worshiping you with care and attention, with discipline, traditionally, right. I'm doing the right thing, right. Uh, uh, this is what leads to this this type of bowing, this type of worship, right. Whom we worship, I'm realizing who you are. You are these five. 
the one that is these five or beyond these five, the Shakti of these five qualities, right? And I'm worshiping you properly with love and attention, right? Love and discipline. Because, some, I mean, I mean, in the devotional tradition, devotion oversteps dharma very often, right? And the bhakti tradition, dharma and 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 whatever, however you interpret dharma, right? Bhakti is higher than dharma, right? But and that's tr I think our we have our ecstatic tradition from coming from Sri Ramakrishna and Chaitanya has that language also, right? But bhakti is also we we perform dharma according because of bhakti right it's like love oversteps it's the goal of dharma and when we have love that's the highest thing everything melts away but why are we have why do we follow dharma out of bhakti right out of love for the goddess right we do we try to do our sadhanas properly we try to observe festivals properly we try to behave courteously respectfully to our gurus and the saints and the scriptures and the devas and the temples right to each other we try we we do everything we do our duties to our parents to our family to our country to our children right to uh to to, to our religion all that we do everything also as a sign of devotion right devotion is not without discipline devotion is not without tradition right we have a tradition of devotion and we have disciplines of devotion of course, when the something's on fire, it's on fire, right? That 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 that's the highest, the highest state. And but there, and in these verses, they're on fire, and they pull themselves together and they bow, realizing who now they realize who they bow to, who they're bowing to, right? But they're bowing with great care and attention. So we'll leave it there tonight. Uh, um, um, oh, another point, the, the last uh, last final point, I think it's important to, as a, as a, pull it all together. What are these five? Devi, uh, Devi, Mahadevi, Shiva, Pakriti, Bhadra. So we described it as the Atman, Paramatma, Nishwara, Brahman, right? Uh, uh, Avijamaya Shakti, Vijamaya Shakti, or uh, uh, creation, sustenance, uh, creation, sustenance, uh, um, destruction, covering, and revealing, right? Grace and covering, yeah, yeah. And we should do it with great attention and devotion, right? That's how we should do all sadhana, right? We do our sadhana to whom? The one that is the self of all, myself, the self of all, the universe, the supreme absolute truth itself, the one who high, who creates, sustains, destroys, who uh, covers and reveals, right? If you're not worshiping that, her, him, right? You're not worshiping. In bhakti yoga, some of Vivekananda's bhakti yoga, he gives a controversial definition of bhakti. He says bhakti can only be to Ishwara. We use the language, oh, he, we have bhakti to our political leader, or bhakti to an ideal. And we can use that language. We're devoted to an ideal. We have great love for our country, like that. That's okay. But bhakti is love for Ishwara. That's his definition, of, right? And so whoever you're worshiping, if you believe your deity, right, either you're meditating on the self, you're meditating on Brahman, or you're meditating on Krishna, or on Kali, or on Devi, on Ramakrishna, on Ram, on Shiva, on Jesus, whoever you're meditating on, this is who you should be meditating on. This is who you're bowing to, right? You're bowing to the one that's the self of all, the supreme Brahman, the one who, uh, the, 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 the creator, destroyer, preserver, uh, um, um, binder, and revealer. Right, cover, cover, and reveal it. Right, that's the one that we worship. Um, um, His Holiness Swami Krishnananda Saraswati Maharaj, the great disciple of Swami Shivananda. I think Ambikananda was present. We the last time we saw him living, I, my God's grace, I had a lot of contact with him over the years, short contacts, but every year I, I got to see him and ask with great fear and trepidation, ask another question. He was a very intimidating Swami brilliant person and a little gruff personality and, and intellectually towering so it's, you get very nervous when you speak in front of just people but i think i don't remember somebody if, if we asked or you asked somebody but he talked about japa and about meditation and he says that whatever month are you whatever sadhana you're doing whatever month are you're chanting to whatever deity you should think 
that that's the highest deity, right? That if you think it's not the highest deity, why will you worship? If you think, oh, I'm worshiping Kali, but she's a lower deity, she's I'm worshiping Kali, because then what you're doing, you're oh, I'm worshiping Kali because she'll destroy my uh, enemies or something, not because she's a supreme deity, right? Is that your meditation won't work unless the one you meditate has to be has to be the highest, right? Of course, Sri Ramakrishna said all the forms are the highest, if we understand it. And his holiness Swami Chidananda, the brother disciple Swami Krishnananda, he told me, right, uh, uh, in some private instruction, not private personal instruction that can be that described openly. It's a common teaching, right? He says when whatever wherever you go when you go to a temple. Like if you go, let's say you're a, a Krishna Bhakta or Ram Bhakta, and you go to a temple and there's a Shiva Murti, right? You should bow to Shiva, not because, oh, it's just he's a lower deity or an aspect of your deity like that. No, the one I call Rama, that one is Shiva, and I bow, right? You know, it's like the one that you see, why bow otherwise? You bow, niyata, uh, kunatasmatam, we bow with humility and care to the one that it creates, sustains, destroys, conceals and reveals that's this that's the self paramat the atman paramatma brahman vijamaya avijamaya you know it should be supreme that's what gives you the focus the proper meditation that that creates bhakti's only fishoda whoever you worship worship as ishoda or ishuri right in this way so, um let's see here real quick So I shall, I'm going to, let's see if I can do another screen share, because today is Bhuvanishwadi Jayanti. I lost it. One second, dear ones. Okay, let me have this. Mm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's worth it. Mm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's worth it. It's worth it. I'm echoing on myself. I'm echoing on myself. I think I will have to post it. I've lost it. I I had it posted on my screen. I think I lost it. I think it. I will have to post it. I uh -oh. lost it. I I had it posted on my screen. I think I will have to post it. I lost it. I had it posted on my screen. Pretty good, huh? I think I will have to post it. I lost it. I had it posted on my screen. Pretty good. One second. Okay. Share screen. Can you see that? Okay. Devi Neta Grahasit Saiva Jagadandam Srijat Kama Kaleti Vidyayate Shrimgar Kaleti Vidyayate Tasya Eva Brahma Aji Janat Vishnu Ji Janat Rudro Ji Janat Sarve Marudgana Ajijanan Gandharvaksara Sahar 
Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Hmm. Any questions or comments? That beautiful verse of that painting. I, I'm in love with this painting of of art of uh, 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 from the Art Adagia site, in one of his new paintings, and that painting actually shows the scene where Brahma Vishnu and Shiva go up to heaven to Manidvip and have that vision, right? And but he put a lot, and these are some of the verses that he's used to meditate upon the, the description of who is that Devi. To whom Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva are born, everything is born. She is the Om, she is the Vidya, she's even the goddess of the Sri Vidya, right? Very exalted. So, on this holy day of, of Bhuvaneshwari Jayanti, we want a little, we glorified her a little bit with our words, but also meditating on this beautiful form and mantra. Riyom Tatsat. Any questions or comments? Samaji. I can't hear you, Samaji. Um, Elijah had asked mm -hmm. if the mantra um, from the Tripura Sundari mantra, if you, that could be posted. Yeah, so the Sri Vijaya Gada Trim Sristi Siti Laishwarim Namami Vedam Nita Maha Tripura Sundari. Yeah, I'll post it up. Remind me, Samaji, I'll post it tonight on the. On the Thank um, you, Guruji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A beautiful one. And I'm not quite sure the pedigree of the mantra. I've not. I. I know. I've only seen it recited in modern times. I haven't seen it referred to a text or anything. But we use it here at the temple when worshiping as our pranam mantra for Lalita. They put a sundari. <laughs> and then cauliflowers had made a um, a comment. Mm. When you were talking about uh, creation, preservation, and dissolution or destruction, and concealing and revealing. She mentioned that is like a connection, but uh, there are also five elements of creation. So when, when you're dealing with like the magical, I'm having a bad time with computers today. When you're doing with the with the um, uh, um, the magical numbers of the magical quality of numbers, right? When you have five, you know, five the five senses, the five elements. You know, the, you could start describing it that that way also, right? Here we're interpreting it in this way, but you could actually, I mean, I've not seen it. In I was actually thinking about this. They were thinking about the numerical, the thing that jumps out as five names. Maybe these five refers to, can be uh, the five elements of the five senses be involved like that. Because I haven't seen it, I didn't want to just project it. And it's like, oh, Devi means earth element. Mahadevi means greater than the earth element. That's obviously the one. That's the water element's greater than earth. You know, I started thinking that way and created my whole thing. Maybe what I've just done is the equivalent of that, right? But it's not my own thing. I'm I'm quoting from the uh, traditional commentators, right? Uh, uh, but there may very well be. You know, whenever you're dealing with numbers like this, right? Maybe. Boom. Anything else? Unmute yourself if you want to ask a question or make a comment. 
We have a nice group today. Ran Mali has a question. Ran Mali. Swamiji, I was, no, I think I just wanted the Mahatripura Sundari Mantra shared within the group. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Jai Ma. It's seconded. It's seconded. So I shall. <laughs> you shall. Good and good. Well, nice to see you again. <laughs> start, start again. So we have, um, maybe you know, there's a, a, uh, uh, what is it? A uh, hurricane <laughs> coming up. Actually, um, um, uh, we heard a lot of danger in San Felipe. Uh, Carolyn, Ma, everything. Are everybody preparing or? Yeah. Hopefully, the thing's okay. Hurricanes coming in through Mexico, and, and we'll, we'll see how much. I mean, we're going to get some rain and some wind. We'll see how much makes it to, to Southern California here. But everybody stay safe. There's a lot of fires going around. So, Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Let's go back to the gallery. Jai Ma, Jai Ma, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. We're 10 minutes over. Not too bad. Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Durga Dasi, Jai Ma. Jerry's here. Jai Jai Ma. Ma. We, we missed you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Jai Ma Swami Ji, I missed you guys as well. You. <laughs> good, good. Wonderful, wonderful. Hari Om Tat Sat, Hari Om Tat Sat. Jai Bhubaneshwari Devi Ki, Jai Mahamayi Ki, Jai Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna Devi Ki, Jai Swamiji Maharaj Ki, Jai. Ma Bhavatar Nidakshina Kali Ki, Jai. Today is also Vamana Jayanti, right? So uh, Vamana Avatar, the dwarf incarnation of the Lord. Um, is also to, we celebrate today a very auspicious day. And I think Pradosha also auspicious for Shiva. So as auspicious for Devi Bhubaneshwari, for Vishnu as Ravamana, and for Shiva as Pradosha. But we all know the essence of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva is of course Devi. So we actually learned today. Hariyom, Hariyom. Good night. Hariyom. Jai Ma Swami Jai. Jai Ma Jai. Everybody, is everything okay in in oh. San Felipe? Yes, I I think so, Swami. I didn't hear anything uh, else wise. Okay, yeah, I know. We heard, yeah, we saw extreme you. extreme wind weather warnings and. Oh. Some other some Yamikanan has been getting alerts because he got onto a, a weather app when he was when we were there. Oh so. yeah. I will ask Ricardo tomorrow. Yeah, yeah make sure everything's okay. I will pray for him. Yes. Okay. Jai Thank ma, you, Jai Ma. Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Jai ma.